All right, everyone. Welcome to Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, hardware releases, and the websites by plebs or plebs. Joining us today is return, well, return guest, fellow Bitcoiner, talking about Mr. Robot. All right. He's going to join in on the fun a little bit later, but you know where we're going. We're going to go take a look at those numbers. Number time! Sponsored by... Bitcoin 2022. At the time of this recording, the block height is 705,908. The Bitcoin price, 65,760. Total public... Oh, sorry. Chain rewrite <laughs> For anyone who's new to the channel, this is Satoshi the Bitcoin Chicken, and he hasn't clucked in 200 days, and he only clucks when the price of Bitcoin reaches an all-time high, which it did! 67,000, or almost 67,000, 66,950, a new all-time high, and I suspect he's going to be clucking a lot at the, the last two months of the year. Anyways, Phil, I'm sorry. No, no worries, no worries. Chain rewrite days, 850. Total public lightning capacity holding its own, 3,109.64. Sats per dollar or Moscow time, 1520. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we here come the 1400s. Anyways, blocks to the happening, 134,092. You know Dude. what? Dude. This, this kind of, the, you know what? I'll tell you what. This kind of deserves a little bit of this, right? <gasps> kind of deserves a little bit of this, right? Phil is dancing! <laughs> Woo! But all yeah. The, all, the, all the hate, right, from all the losers like Taleb and the quad four uh, fool there, Keith uh, McCullough, right? And all these geniuses that just, you know, they had it right. Man, Keith right. McCullough, Nassim all Taleb, um... <laughs> Xi Jinping, the China ban, the Elon FUD, everyone, everyone, raw, can't stop the honey badger, honey badger keeps on going, can't believe it bro, just another all time high, but it's, it's crazy, because if you've been in the space long enough, like, you realize that Bitcoin really is like clockwork, this yeah. thing just, you know, it just goes on its own. Just soak it in, guys. If you've been hodling through the summer, if you're if you're new, if you're class of 2021, you're new to this. Welcome to the Bitcoin roller coaster. If you have a couple years under your belt, you guys know what's up. But soak it in. It's these it's these days that we live for, and all the other months of just battling it out in the trenches. Man, pretty nice. Not gonna remember. Lie Remember, it's the path, right? It's the journey, not the destination. So let's enjoy this. This is cool, right? This is this is history. It's happening. We're getting a front row seat. You know, this is cool stuff. Soak it in, soak it in. But remember, guys, again, the caca price, or like we like we say on this channel, or the fiat price, is the noise. What you guys should be focusing on is the Lightning Network capacity, and that continues to rise, which is very surprising. That completely debunks our earlier theory, Phil. <laughs> yeah, we we were wrong in we a good were, way. We were wrong. Sometimes, sometimes way. it's good to be wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but yeah, we're expecting that Lightning Network capacity to keep doing its thing, man. Bitcoin numbers, fabulous. What else is there to say? Let's see what happens at the end of the year. But anyways, Phil, it's time for The Daily Fail, sponsored by Pirate Hash. We got tagged by ICO Sonat once again. And what is it that I love? Every time I see this image, I'm always like, all right, what's coming up? So we scroll up and what do we see? From Sven Henrich? I don't know. He's got the blue check. Uh, what is he? Founder, Northman, trader, navigating change markets, blah, blah, blah. Okay, anyways. Blind trust, eh? Powell was trading in his personal account. Ooh. This is very surprising. Everyone here, I know, is very surprised. I know Mr. Robot's surprised. I know Nico's surprised. I'm definitely surprised. So, without further ado, let's dive into... The very surprising insider trading that happened. Jerome Powell sold more than a million dollars of stock as the market was tanking. 
Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell sold between one and five million dollars worth of stock from his personal account on October 1st, 2020, according to disclosure forms reviewed by the prospect. Powell's sale of shares from Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund has not been previously reported. This sale occurred right before the Dow Jones Industrial Average suffered a significant drop. Now, look, I, I want to point out something about this this particular paragraph, OK, that that his share that his sales were not previously reported. So that means they're being reported now for a reason. Remember, when we're being told information, you always have to ask yourself, why am I being told this information? Who does this you know, who is this benefiting that I am being told this information? Right. Like we always have to ask ourselves, why is this information being put in front of us? Because remember, we want it. They the, the system, right, the entire system that that we exist in needs to create the narrative that these people are accountable, even though we've never seen any of these people actually be accountable. Anyways, I digress. Let's go. Three other uh, three other senior Fed officials have faced serious criticism for making stock trades during the pandemic. Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan, who we reported in a previous episode, and Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren were compelled to take early retirements as a result of the disclosure of their trades. Fed Vice Chair Richard Clarita also came under fire for stock trading. The other trades are now the subject of investigations by the Fed's own Inspector General and the SEC. There is no American with more insider knowledge about the government policy that drives financial market movements other than the chair of the Federal Reserve. The fact that it has to even be implied or said that this person should not be allowed to trade anything at all, should not even be allowed like it. That position should be so heavily scrutinized. But you see, the fiat money doesn't matter. No one gives a shit. They know it's worthless. They know it's worthless. So we're, we're again, we're watching a show. Anyways, let's proceed with the fireworks. Here we go. The stock sale came un, uh, came uh, the stock sale came after the September 15th 16th meeting of the Open Market Committee, but before the minutes of that meeting were released to the public on October 7th. Like really? Like this is blatant, right? This is just blatant. I'm dumping my bags because I know what's going to happen. The smaller trades included mostly bonds and bond funds all below 250 K and most in the 1000 to $50,000 range. Some of them may have to do with automatic portfolio rebalancing. Sure. Powell made 20. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some of them, right? Oh yeah. Don't get me wrong. Some of them I'm sure, right? That just may so happen, but all the ones that he executed himself, you got to come up with a better excuse than that, right? Anyways, Powell made 26 trades in all in 2020, seven sales and 19 purchases. But the October 1st trade stands out because of its size and timing. There are no coincidences. Okay. Under current laws, top Fed officials do not have to put their assets into a blind trust over which they have no control. They don't have to put their assets into a blind trust. Anyways, despite their knowledge of the inner workings of the economy, the Fed's code of conduct for senior official holds that personal financial dealings should be above reproach and information obtained by them as officials of the system should never be used for personal gain. Huh? Okay. That, that's just the, it's the code of conduct, Nico. You're not allowed to do anything with that information. Okay. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to make it so that the rest of your generations of your family are never going to have to work in a day in their life. You're going to have to hold back from that temptation and just grind it out and make your paycheck. Okay. Yeah, sure. Regardless of the blackout periods, the code of conduct continues. Fed officials should carefully avoid engaging in any financial transaction, the timing of which could create the appearance of acting on insider information concerning Federal Reserve deliberations and actions. They should be careful to avoid any dealings or other conduct that might convey even an appearance of conflict between their personal interests, the interests of the system and the public interest. How about these people actually frickin go to jail for what everybody knows is complete scamming? How about that? But they won't. Because when you're part of what prints the money, you're above the law. Anyways, because, right, the people who enforce the law are paid with that money. I digress. Anyways, 
it's, it's, it's the, the tinfoil hat. That's what's happening, Nico. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, when the trades of Kaplan, Rosengren, and Clarita were disclosed in the press, Powell stated that the Fed's rules are clearly seen as not adequate to the task of really sustaining the public's trust in us. You think? Anyways, and he promised to make changes. Even though I'm not such a fan of Elizabeth Warren because, you know, she, she hates Bitcoin because she has to. Anyways, and most likely, I'm sure, willfully doesn't understand it, but we're going to end it off with this, okay? Elizabeth Warren, in a speech on October 5th, faulted Powell for tolerating a culture of corruption at the central bank, calling him a go-along to get-along leader who doesn't know or doesn't care when, on his watch, people with great responsibility advance their own interests over those of our nation or someone who drags his feet in dealing with problems that shake the public's confidence in the institution he leads. I mean, don't get me wrong, but to think for even a second, okay? To think for even a second, this has been happening for years, okay? All that happens is right now, we've got a ton of spending that happened, okay? We've got, a, we've got a pandemic that has crippled the economy, okay? And what we need, what we desperately need are scapegoats, okay? And if we can prove, right? So, so if, if we can prove that, hey, you know what? Look, we're doing something. We're fixing, we're, we're fixing things, right? We're taking charge. Everything is under control. These people aren't getting away with this under our watch. Kidding me? This is such a show, and I feel so bad for the people that believe this crap. Yeah, man. And look, it, this is just a continuation of what we've been covering. Um, you know, initially this this bombshell, the news came out earlier. This is just adding on top of that. Right. Earlier, we reported how Powell was essentially allocating the money that was printed into the assets that he owned. Right. So this is just adding on top of that level. And there's just some key words in there that I want to focus on, which is this idea of public trust in an institution, right? Here's the thing. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Bitcoin removes that element of trust. It's rules without rulers, right? And you see the, you know, the, 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 the point of weakness in a system like this, right? If you are at the top of this pyramid money printer if you're at the top if you're part of that elite group that controls that whole system you know that that's a lot of that's a lot of power and that's think about how tempted you would be to use that insider information and now just connect this with all the shitcoin scams that we've been hearing recently it actually sounds extremely similar right it, and and if you connect it all together it's like it's almost as if when humans get involved with controlling the monetary policy, it gets corrupted. It gets corrupted over and over and over again. So it's like you have the Fed essentially doing the same thing as shitcoiners, right? They control in the terms of in, in, in you know in, in terms of the shitcoiners, they control the smart contract. In the terms of the Fed, they control the fiat money printer, but they're using those things for their own personal benefit and it hurts the public. Now, Bitcoin fixes this because it removes the element of trust. It takes away the monetary policy out of the hands of humans. Therefore, you have an uncorruptible base layer um, of a uh, uh, base layer monetary, uh, uh, monetary network, right? That the world could build upon and it can't be corrupted. Do you want to live in a world like that? Or do you want to live in a world of corruption, right? Because that's where shit coins and fiat is going to lead you. And we've been dedicated this show to showing you example after example after example after example. And what I find hilarious is that even behind that suit and those emblems and that big Federal Reserve building, they are literally doing the exact same thing as shit coiners. Anyways, what do you think, Mr. Robot? Yeah, I mean, you nailed it on, on that. And then that last paragraph where Warren was talking about basically pointing fingers, the first thing that came to my mind was that meme of the three Spider-Man pointing at each other like, no, it's this guy. No, it's you. It's this guy. It's this guy over here. I'm like, no, it's all you. It's all you, all you guys. You're all, you're all involved. 
Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's 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 funny too and and when we covered it, one of the main responses that he says um when this news originally came out was Powell's like, "Yeah, we uh I'm going to look into it and we're going to regulate ourselves." You know, and it just kind of reminds me of like the shit coins, right, with uh their auditing. It's like, "We're going to audit it and you can trust us," you know? And again, the key word here, guys, that I want you to focus on is trust, right? Whether it's the shit coins, right? You have to trust the auditors. Whether it's the Fed, you have to trust that the people at the Fed don't do don't do something bad. You heard it in the wording of the article. Yeah, you, you want the public's trust in these institutions. Bitcoin removes that element of trust. It's rules without rulers. That's why it's an improvement. It's an uncorruptible money, and that's where the new world's going to be built upon: an uncorruptible base layer. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the Daily Meme Review, sponsored by Citadel 21. All right, everybody, the meme for today is brought to us by a meme lord. Definitely go give him a follow. He's part of the Meme Factory, which doesn't exist. You can go give him a follow at GregZag1. Definitely recommend him for some awesome dank Bitcoin memes. Bitcoin is booming again. We need new FUD. China ban. Terrorists. We could run Tetherfud for the millionth time. <laughs> but that's what they're trying to do. I know. And that's why it's funny. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next one from Ben the Carman. Just got this. Bears, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Referencing the Bitcoin all-time high. And last but not least, we got a meme from a uh, fellow co-host, Coin Icarus. Phil, what the fuck is this? I have, oh, dude, I can't even believe you're showing this crap. Okay. I don't even know what so this I is. Just, okay, so I'm watching. I'm watching the freaking the the Wu Tang uh, <laughs> series on Hulu, right? Wu Tang and American Saga, which is by the way awesome. Like I grew up listening to Wu Tang, so you know, like the, it's pretty cool for me. And of course, you know my terrible meme skills. What do you think I did? I took a Bitcoin logo, put it onto a you know a background of that, and just made it slightly faded. Why would you show this? Because it makes now you, I can't even give my score. Because <laughs> like, it makes I'm not you, even scoring that. Because it makes you feel uncomfortable, Fuck and that's this. good. And that's good TV. But yeah, anyways, TV. for Greg's memes for an and ass Ben's ass, memes, that's good TV. <laughs> <laughs> for Greg's memes and Ben's memes, I'm going to give it vibrating Nico's face. You have one of those? Yeah. Whoa! I just got dizzy. And I just ordered one. And for Phil's meme, because he likes gadgets, I'm going to give it a one terabyte Seagate SSD, or I think this is a hard drive, maybe? I don't know. What about you, Phil? What would you give those memes? Too generous. Too generous. Okay. So for that first meme, which actually is a meme, I'm going to give it a proper score, which is my... No one, no one, very few people have one of these. It is a hacked over magnet. Oof. Right? Nice. Who okay. has a Hacktober magnet? Anyways, for my meme, I'm going to give it absolutely nothing because it was garbage and <laughs> I wish you didn't show it. So, yeah, that happened. Thanks. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Robot? What would you give those memes? All right. Well, that, that was hilarious. For the first one, uh, I'm going to give it I'm gonna give this one back to Phil. It's going to be a carrot. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as in like the carrot codes, you know, shout out to uh, Flip, carrot codes. And then for uh, for Nico on the other meme, and for Phil, I'm going to give it a uh, squeaky pig. Oh, squeaky <laughs> pig! <laughs> that okay. could have been Satoshi! Oh, that could have been Just Satoshi. saying! <laughs> All right, we got, a, we got a carrot, a squeaky pig, that could have been Satoshi. We got Nico's vibrating face, we got a Seagate drive. We got absolutely nothing from Phil, and we got a uh, uh, Hacktober, Hacktober magnet that no one has apparently. But anyways, guys, very few people have. Very few people have. It's scarce. It's not absolutely scarce. <laughs> it's like scarce, Bitcoin. but it doesn't need to be on the blockchain, Thanks. and it doesn't require <laughs> a unique hash. <laughs> it's go. simply fine as a magnet. Boom. Boom. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good. Good. Anyways, guys, we want to know. Do you agree with our scores? You disagree? Let us know down in the comments. Rate the meme yourselves. And of course, join our Telegram group. Link us some Bitcoin memes to review. Because it's a Bitcoin meme review. And we need Bitcoin memes to review. 
Anyways, Phil, it's time for The Daily News, sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. You're an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) I saw that and I'm like, what is that? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's just, it's essentially, it's the Wu-Tang guys all standing on a chessboard. And I just stuck the fucking Bitcoin logo because think about it, right? The world, the chessboard, all these shadow guys, you can't really make out the Bitcoin logo. Man, that's deep. I know, it didn't work. Fuck it. All right, everybody, check this out. Some bullish, bullish news. Bitcoin, a 12-year-old currency, surpasses the Swiss franc to become the world's 13th largest currency. Not so Uh bad. Not so bad. Kind of breaks all the narratives. And this is after the China ban, Elon, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) But it's not also that. Uh, Bitcoin is creeping up on... Silver, and here's the worst part. Uh, Silver uh, had like a hundred thousand year head start. <laughs> but you, you, Nico, you're misunderstanding. There's utility there. That, yes, true. That's true. I apologize. Don't I forget apologize. my utility. I apologize. So very, very, very cool stuff on that stuff. But anyways, let's get to the news. Check this out. Uh, I, I don't agree with this. But anyways, uh, we have to talk about this. Bitcoin went public today. Satoshi would be proud. I don't know about that statement. Um, Autonaut says, LOL. I think that kind of summarizes how the the plebs feel about this. But it is Bitcoin news, so we have to report it. It says, the moment ProShares launched their Bitcoin futures ETF. And I'm going to play the video. Live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, it's October 19th, 2021. Please welcome executives and guests of ProShares to highlight the first U.S. Bitcoin Link ETF. To honor the occasion, they are ringing the opening bell of the New York Stock Exchange. So, it's so funny to see these people standing there that have absolutely nothing to do with Bitcoin. Dude, like, <laughs> it's like, like, it looks like participation trophy winners. Like, like, I, I see, I see dinosaurs interacting with the future, and it's like, like the stock market closes, but Bitcoin keeps going, and it's like, you know, I don't know if Satoshi would be proud. Like us, I plebs, made this. Us plebs are just kind of <laughs> eh, about it. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> Moving on to the Bloomberg article before I get you guys' thoughts. Um, a positive here for a second. Phil, your laptop, okay. your laptop's covering up your camera. All right, so check out this article from Bloomberg. Bitcoin futures ETF debuts as second highest traded fund ever. That's actually pretty cool, I guess. Uh, but moving on. And remember what I told you about the Bitcoin incentives, right? Um, and so now you have a little bit of... Uh, competition you have a little bit of competition on wall street for those bitcoin etfs and uh he says i'm going to guess that this group collectively owns less than one bitcoin he's absolutely right uh i would say and then uh it's funny because the plebs are just there saying uh, (laughs) the truth finally a good tweet barry why so salty barry afraid people don't order your gtbc lunch package anymore and right because they're really telling there's really calling out what these uh etfs are but anyways uh, you know, Gary Schilbert moves on to uh, file Ga- uh, Grayscale files with SEC to convert its Bitcoin trust into an ETF. So now there's multiple ETFs, and this is the incentives of Bitcoin. This is how it works. Everyone's trying to compete. This is this is Bitcoin. You see this in mining as well. Anyways, and it just benefits the network in general. Grayscale Investment, the world's largest digital currency asset manager, has filed with the uh, SEC to convert its Grayscale Bitcoin Trust into a Bitcoin spot ETF, the company announced in a press release Tuesday. The move comes just after the SEC cleared the way on Friday for Bitcoin Futures ETF to trade with ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF scheduled to start trading on the New York Stock Exchange on Tuesday. Now... Here's the thing. There's a little bit of signal there. At least the grayscale one is a Bitcoin spot ETF. 
rather than the ProShares one, which is a futures ETF. But anyways, here's the signal, guys. Grayscale holds roughly 3.44% of all Bitcoin in circulation. Holy cow. But anyways, Marty Bent uh, has this really good article that he released today or, you know, whatever. These things, these, you know, things that he releases and I think he summarizes perfectly why this isn't so good and then I'll get your guys' opinions. Uh, he says, the nature of future contracts is, is such that they have a range of expiration dates that force traders to settle upon expiry. The nature of settling future contracts and rebalance, uh, rebalancing by buying new contracts with later expiration dates means that these funds will naturally come with more fees, right? So instead of just buying Bitcoin, right? You're buying Bitcoin, you're buying a future, which is basically you're betting on the price of Bitcoin in the future, and there's a fee on top of that. Anyways, uh, your Bitcoin exposure is at the whim of future speculators and not the sp spot price of Bitcoin at any given time. But still, right, the GBTC ETF, which Gary Schilbert wants to do, is a spot one, but you still shouldn't buy that one. Why? Because you're you're paying unnecessary fees, right? And uh, Marty makes a really good point. He goes on to say, when things get weirder on the inflation front, and they will get weirder, that nature of monetary policy, fiscal policy, plus supply chain constraints demands that it will, the last thing you want is to realize is that you're holding nothing but shitty paper claims on mm -hmm. cuck bucks that are losing value faster than moldy yogurt, right? So at the end of the day, Marty's absolutely right. Like, you know, I guess the Wall Street and the institutional crowds are up in arms celebrating. This is great. You know, Michael Saylor's like, oh, my God, this is a big deal. But for us plebs, we see it for what it is. This is paper Bitcoin, right? That you're trusting some like a custodian to to have the amount of bitcoin that they supposedly have and now the question is and, and catlin long touched upon this right is how much of that bitcoin is going to be rehypothecated right so how much of that bitcoin is just not going to leave it's just going to stay in the custody of these institutions and what's going to happen is essentially what happened to the gold market right where there's a bunch more paper gold than there is physical gold right Again, you know, Bitcoin is a little bit protected from this because the 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 just the mere fact of taking self custody is so much easier than taking physical custody of actual gold. So there is protection there. But again, you know, everyone was celebrating about this on Twitter. They were making such a big deal. But is this going to help the revolution? Like the revolution as in freeing man freeing mankind from the tyranny of central banking? No, what's going to help the, the revolution is more individuals taking self custody of their Bitcoin. So, yeah, probably for short term price, which is why we don't like to talk about it on the channel. Perhaps it's a good thing. Woohoo! But again, I don't think this is a good thing. You're giving you're essentially giving Bitcoin to the people or to part of the machine that we're trying to tear down in the first place. So, again, like. That's the pleb perspective, or at least that's my perspective. What do you think, Phil? Then we'll get Mr. Robot's opinion. So a, a couple of things on this. Um, yeah, I definitely, you know, I don't really, I mean, I get why Michael Saylor is cheering it, right? He also has a board of directors he has to answer to. He's, he's got a bunch of really high paid people that do absolutely nothing around him, that bark orders around him. So he's got, he's got some different motivations, right? This is something I learned a long time ago about investing. You know, when you're looking at other people's moves, Every person invests for their own timeline and their own reasons. Yes, every person invests to make money, but everyone has a different reason, right? Maybe you're buying a house, maybe you're retiring. Everybody has different timelines. So it's great, it's great that Michael Saylor's happy about this. Look, the Bitcoin ETF, um, I, I, I know it's great for in terms of exposure, but it is, you know, make no mistake, it does absolutely nothing for the Bitcoin network itself. OK, it does absolutely nothing for the Bitcoin network itself. Yes, some people can argue this abstract uh, excuse to say, well, it brings more attention and that'll bring more miners. Let me tell you something. The incentives will bring more miners. We didn't have a Bitcoin ETF all these years. We didn't the miners need. came. We, didn't and, need. Uh, we still don't. Huh? We don't need it. But but this is my point. 
the miners came anyways because incentives. <laughs> so so the, it, it's complete nonsense. It, it's garbage. To me, the way I see it, it is this abstract shitcoin layer that, you know, stands, you know, 100 feet away from Bitcoin and goes, I'm like him. You know, I'm, li I'm like this thing over here. But exactly. y you're not. You're not like this thing over there. It's it's paper Bitcoin. You're, yeah. you're, you're literally it's paper Bitcoin. You're buying fake Bitcoin. You're buying yep. an IOU of Bitcoin, right? Um, but anyways, Mr. Robot, what are your thoughts on this? Because you you were actually texting me on Telegram on Signal, and you mm -hmm. actually had a really good opinion. So drop it on us, bro. All right. So to break down like what an ETF is like, and this is coming from. Uh, Coindesk says Bitcoin ETFs allow investors to gain exposure to leading cryptocurrency without having to actually own it. Well, fuck, I don't, I want to own Bitcoin. I guess this isn't for me. Tell you what, I'll give you my money. You keep my keys and then you charge me 2% all mm -hmm. year for having it. Well, that's nice. Well, what does Grayscale have? Let's, let's run the numbers. You guys love running the numbers. Grayscale currently holds, and this is from the uh, Buy Bitcoin. Uh, worldwide treasuries off hope.com it's at 654,600 bitcoin that kind of sounds like they're keeping it absolutely that's that's <laughs> that's not going that's not going anywhere that's not, not going even, anywhere that's literally not going anywhere i know that they have to sell some right based yeah. on how many people are are getting exposure to grayscale but what i fear is for example boomers when i always pitch them bitcoin they always feel insecure because of the self-custody aspect so what i end up doing you know to a lot of them is i tell them like listen if you just don't want to get too uncomfortable just buy gbtc right so like for the older generation right like this idea of self-custody is so alien that this you know this etf idea is like oh now i could get exposure to bitcoin but it, it, they're not taking advantage of the main value proposition of bitcoin which is self-sovereignty controlling yep. your money completely without having to ask anybody for permission but moving on to a little bit phil we kind of got caught off guard a little bit um and let me tell you why dude so while we were focusing on El Salvador and how essentially now they're setting up uh, how Strike set up this, you know, or Chivo wallet set up this uh, remittance thing. So now you could send money from the United States from abroad to El Salvador for a fraction of, you know, the cost that it would, you know, the fraction of the fee of what it would cost you with uh, Western Union. What we didn't realize is that uh, Facebook is actually moving along and attempting to do the same thing. But they're, yeah. they're doing the same thing in Guatemala. So check this out. Facebook's digital wallet finally launches without DM cryptocurrency. Novi launches in the U.S. and Guatemala, but only with the Paxos stablecoin for now. Right. So it looks like, you know, like these tech companies, they don't want this open monetary network right they want this intranet right so they could still you know parasitically take advantage of it um but it's funny though because the problem with centralized entities is that they don't do so well when it comes to the government and we already know based on you know this uh new york times article which we covered on the show that the treasury and the u.s government in general is up in arms about Bitcoin, because look, just read the title for yourself. Treasury warns that digital currencies could weaken U.S. sanctions, right? When you have an open monetary network like Bitcoin that's decentralized, they could say all they want, but you really can't stop the signal, unlike Facebook. So uh, check out this article by The Tribute. Uh, Facebook can't be trusted to manage payment systems, U.S. lawmakers, right? The article goes on to say, sharpening the attack on Facebook, a group of U.S. Democrats has asked Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to end his digital wallet and cryptocurrency project, adding that the social network can't be trusted to manage cryptocurrency. In a letter, Senator Brian Schatz Sherrod Brown and Elizabeth Warren, there she is again, and others that said Facebook is once again pursuing digital currency plans on an aggressive timeline. 
It has already launched a pilot for payment uh, payments infrastructure network, even though these plans are incompatible with the actual financial regulatory landscape, not only for DM specifically, but also for stable coins in general. The letter came after Facebook launched Novi, a new digital wallet, as part of a pilot program in the U.S. and Guatemala, reports The Verge. In the letter, the, senators, uh, the senator said Facebook cannot be trusted to manage a payment system or digital currency when its existing ability to manage risk and keep consumers safe has proven wholly insufficient. We urge you to immediately discontinue your Novi pilot and to commit that you will not bring DM to the market, they stressed. So again, right, why is this happening? Don't take it from me, listen, I'll just read you Satoshi's quote. He'll say it better than I can. Governments are good at cutting off the heads of a centrally controlled networks like Napster. But pure peer-to-peer -peer networks like uh, Genetella and Tor seem to be holding their own, right? So again, why and, and just connect the dots a little bit, right? Treasury warns that the digital currencies could weaken US sanctions, but Facebook decides to do it anyways. Well, guess what? There's a Facebook CEO to knock on the door of and say, hey, I don't like your pilot program in Guatemala. It's taking power away from me. But with Bitcoin, on the other hand, whose door are you going to knock on? <laughs> Nobody's. Right. So again, like you have these tech companies that are trying to pivot, right? They're trying to capture market share. They're paying attention to what Strike is doing. We missed it a little bit, to be honest. This came out of nowhere. And I think Facebook kind of did that on purpose to try to fly under the radar of the regulators. But dude, there you go again, right? The regulators aren't having anything of it. Why? Because it takes power away from them. Right, it takes powers away from them. The U.S. dollar, like we've reported on the show, a lot of the power that comes from the U.S. is not necessarily coming from the U.S. Army. It comes from the weaponization of the dollar and the sanctions that the U.S. places on countries. And because the U.S. is the world reserve currency, right, they could basically exclude whole countries from the world monetary system. Right. So Facebook's trying to say, hey, look, I'm going to create my monetary system. But guess what? Because it's not decentralized, there's a head to cut off, just like Satoshi said. With Bitcoin, on the other hand, you can scream and fight all you want. But how are you going to stop someone transacting peer to peer with a pure decentralized network? You can't stop it. The U.S. government tried with the OFAC compliant box. They tried pressuring Marathon. That didn't work out too well. A decentralized network is the only way that we, that it's the only tool that we have to change the system, to change this terrible slavery system that we have now where central bankers and elites get to decide who is bankable, who is unbankable, right? And on the other side, on the bright side, right, you have this open free monetary network that's all inclusive that has rules without rulers there's no such thing as elites in the bitcoin network right so again major fail from facebook i'm sorry phil because that is a fail but i kind of tied it into the news a little bit anyways what are yeah. your guys thoughts on this you know what i find it incredibly entertaining that a government which has proven beyond the shadow of a doubt, that it is completely incompetent in handling monetary policy, okay, is saying that Facebook is too incompetent to manage cryptocurrency. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, we are absolutely living in the real-time epitome of the clown universe. Like, this is like the clown universe cubed, okay, where these, these two entities that clearly do not have your best interest at heart want to somehow control the value that you, you know, that you work hard to produce that you cannot trade back for, right? We've gone through this before. We, you know, when we give our time for money, it's an irreversible trade. They, on the other hand, can totally screw with the value of that trade. And they can do it in real time. They can even do it after we've given that time. So anyways, going back to Facebook, you know what? Screw them. I mean, I, I couldn't care less that they can't go and make their own currency. If anything, what they should be doing, but they can't because Mark has way too much of an ego. 
Mm -hmm. And so does that stupid company. I'm sorry. All those places over there, they always think that they're changing the world. I'm sorry, you're not changing the world. That, that's not how this is working. Okay, like, I, I, the internet changed the world. You know, you built an app. Get over it. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, like, b besides that, these people, it doesn't matter, right? Like, what they should be doing, they could be concentrating their billions of dollars on adding to the Bitcoin ecosystem, finding how they can create value on the Bitcoin ecosystem and become a part of it going forward so that they don't get left behind and Facebook doesn't become the Facebook. Never mind. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like Jack, like Jack d is doing with Twitter. He's perfectly taking advantage of this. He of added course. Twitter tips to Twitter. You could now get tipped from anywhere around the world, right? To to based on the quality of your tweet. And there's no middleman. There's no one to regulate. That's the whole point. But anyways, Mr. Robot, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I can kind of see what's ha what Facebook was trying to do with that. So what they're trying to do because they're already selling your data without your knowledge. Well, they are, they kind of admitted that they're already selling your data. So what they wanted to do, they were going to create a shit coin to attach your data to, to sell, so they could sell your data back to it, sell your own data back to you in that shit coin. And then the federal government's like, hold on, wait a minute. No, we're going to do that later with the CBDCs. So you can't have that. <laughs> and that's exactly why they shut fucking Facebook down just because of that shit. They're like, nah, -uh, that's our job. Amen to that. Brother. Beautiful. I'm beautiful. Beautiful. That was that was so well put, you guys. The nail in the coffin. Stop using the state's money. It's their money. It's not your money. Start using Bitcoin. It's your money. It's not their money. Defund them. Defund tyranny. Opt the f out of their broken clown world system. But anyways, Phil, there was an open source software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases. All right, we've got Lightning Terminal version 0.5.2 Alpha that was released. It is a browser-based interface for managing your channel liquidity. It's actually looking pretty cool. Anyways, down below in the show notes, check it out. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, that was our show. Before we go, get your tickets to Bitcoin 2022. It's going to be the largest Bitcoin conference ever hosted in sunny, sunny, sunny Miami. Get your tickets to it quick because the prices do go up. Take advantage of the link down below for 10% off for tickets for the conference to Bitcoin 2022. It's awesome. Check out CryptoCloaks.com for the best 3D printed merch like the Bitcoin grenade. Take advantage of the link down below for 5% off anything on the store, uh, CryptoCloaks.com. Check out Citadel 21 for the best Bitcoin cultural zine. Get yourself a physical copy. There's only a thousand made of each volume, Citadel21.com. And of course, check out Pirate Hash for some awesome Bitcoin trinkets, like a Bitcoin board game and a Bitcoin source poster. There's a bunch of cool stuff. It's by the guy that did the UI for BISC. PirateHash.com. And of course, I want to give a shout out to our awesome guest and dear friend of ours, Mr. Robot. You can go give him a follow at the Bitcoin Doctor. Guys, that was our show. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash the like button. And of course, if you want to continue hearing the catastrophic fails from the shit coiners and the central bankers, which are basically the same thing at this point, and the Bitcoin news from the PPLEP perspective, definitely consider subscribing. And we'll see you tomorrow, guys, for another episode of Simply Bitcoin. The clown world central bankers are trying to sell you a shitcoin future. Don't buy it. Thank <laughs> you.